The Aneurysmal Bone Cyst by Erica Boyd and Katie Schetzel. The aneurysmal bone cyst is a tumor of unknown cause and therefore its categorization and description vary slightly with each source re reference. ABC is best understood as an abnormal reactive response within the bone giving rise to excessive proliferation of the vasculature. Some believe this reactive lesion is a deliritous response to trauma. Due to the radiographic and histological qualities of ABC, the term cyst and neoplasm appear in the literature. Aneurysmal bone cysts are benign neoplasms known to affect the temporomandibular joint, but are more commonly reported in the long bones, including the spine. Granulomas consist of a large group of modified macrophages surrounded by lymphocytes. Seen as pale pink under the microscope, these clusters of cells have an epithelial resemblance, thus have been referenced as epithelioid cells. When these epithelioid cells are condensed and some fused, the term giant cell is used. Clinical features. The clinician should bear in mind that like giant cell tumors, ABC is for the most part uncommon. The majority of documentation places patients in the age range from 20 to 40 years of age with a male, with, excuse me, with a female preponderance ever so slightly. When it does affect individuals under 20, there is no gender predilection. The lesion can grow rapidly, presenting with asymmetry in the jaw, mimicking malignancy. Patients experiencing ABC rapid growth will complain of local pain, tenderness, or functional disability. When located in the orbit, the cyst can cause proptosis of the eye. A 25-year-old male patient presented at Rama College of Dentistry in India with asymptomatic swelling in the right lower back teeth region for one year with a gradual increase to its present size. There was no history of trauma and he presented with facial asymmetry and a diffuse swelling on the right side with a 3 by one firm and non-tender lesion. The intraoral exam showed diffuse swelling in relation to right lower second premolar, first and third molars, vestibular obliteration, and expansion of buccal and lingual cortical bone. On aspiration, blood tinged fluid was obtained and the EPT showed non-vital. This case will be followed along our entire presentation to show pictures of the radiographs and the case treatment. In the oral cavity, the most common areas for an aneurysmal bone cyst to appear are in the molar region of the body, the ankle, and the ramus of the mandible. It can also be occurring in the anterior region but is less common. The lesion appears in the mandible much more than the maxilla with a ratio reported as high as 3 to 1. The lesion's edge is normally well defined. However, poorly defined wispy septa can be found at right angles to the outer expanded border. This makes the lesion almost cloud-like. The shape of the lesion is best described as circular or hydraulic. Depending on size, it can become more of an oval shape. Aneurysmal bone cysts can appear as multilocular or unilocular radiolucent lesions, although a multilocular appearance is more common. In CT soft tissue algorithm images, large vascular spaces may appear as radiolucent circles. The outer cortical plates can be expanded if the bone cyst becomes large. This is more pronounced than in other lesions. Aneurysmal bone cysts can also displace and cause radicular resorption of the teeth. In more extreme circumstances, as shown below, the mandibular canal can become displaced to the lower border of the mandible. Aneurysmal bone cysts generally appear as a large unilateral single entity. The size of ABC is variable depending on the location and severity of from the cases observed. A typical lesion in the mandible is 6 by 2.5 by 4 centimeters in size. Shown are the radiographs from the case study for the 25-year-olds from Rama University. The lower right occlusal radiograph shows expansion of the cortical plates. There's a large unilocular radiolucency in the body shown in the pantomograph. The pantomograph also shows displacement of the mandibular canal. The CT scan shows the large expansile cystic lesion at the center at the ramus. Aneurysmal bone cysts can be found in several different bones in the body. The location of a tumor can provide some differential value and those occurring in the head and neck region have direct prevalence into the dental professional. It is generally unilateral and exhibits clinical features including swelling of the face, a young demographic, local pain, and rapid growth. Because ABC is very rarely occurring disease, 
Being even more rare in the oral cavity, it is unlikely that a clinician would be able to diagnose the condition immediately without first going through other differential options. Giant cell granuloma is named as the differential interpretation due to the similar appearance of the multilocular lesions on the radiographs. It can also be found in the same age group of people, 20 years old. In a case study summary, it is discussed that aneurysmal bone cysts could instead just be secondary phenomenon to the pre-existing giant cell granuloma. In a case of the month, it is stated that clinically the difference between the two diseases is that ABC is due to high pressure hemorrhage, while central giant cell granuloma is due to low pressure hemorrhage. Therefore, it is uncertain whether the two are indistinguishable. The textbook states that aneurysmal bone cysts might expand to a greater degree and appear more often in the posterior region of the mandible than giant cell granulomas. CGCG can be painless and or slow growing in either characteristic could differentiate the lesion from ABC. Ameloblastoma is another differential interpretation because it appears as a unilateral multilocular radiolucency on a radiograph in the posterior mandible. This can be eliminated by histological differences, but clinically is more common in an older age group, with the average being 40 years old. There is a slight predilection in men, which is the opposite of ABC. The tumor also grows slowly, while ABC grows rapidly. Odontogenic myxoma can be mistaken for aneurysmal bone cysts, since it is also a multilocular radiolucency found in the posterior mandible on radiographs, and clinically found in patients in their 20s. Again, the lesion would have to be differentiated by an histological evidence. An odontogenic myxoma shows microscopic characteristics similar to those of soft tissue myxomas, excluding giant cells, which would set the lesion apart from ABC. ABC is one of several benign tumors which can be mistaken for hyperplasia. In some circumstances, the lesion might be a combination of the two or very difficult to differentiate either radiographically or clinically. Because ABC can be found in so many places, many hyperplasias can be listed as differential diagnosis for the disease. Like aneurysmal bone cysts, cherubism clinically shows an enlarged face. It typically develops in children two to six years of age, so much younger than ABC. It also demonstrates giant cell-like features and could be a differential interpretation due to its radiographic appearance, but unlike aneurysmal bone cysts, is bilateral and generally centered on the ramus. Since aneurysmal bone cysts can have a large variety of radiographic and clinical presentations, several differential interpretations could exist. When it is considered that the spine is a likely place to find ABC, an entirely new list of differential interpretations could be listed. The final interpretation for ABC would have to rely on three factors to truly eliminate all other diseases. These include radiographic, histologic, and clinical factors. The final interpretation would be based on a multilocular, unilateral lesion with giant cell histology and a quickly growing painful mass visible on the outside of the face. Treatment of the aneurysmal bone cysts proves just as challenging as coming to a consensus on etiology. The response to treatment of an aneurysmal bone cyst will vary, and treatment must take into account location and size of tumor. ABC is curable by curatage or conservative local resection to prove function to preserve function and maximize aesthetics at the site of the tumor. Complete removal of the lesion is recommended, but may be difficult since the lesions are often multilocular and may be divided by multiple bony septa. Other treatments include cutaneous sclerotherapy, diagnostic and therapeutic embolization, block resection and reconstruction, radiotherapy and systemic calcitonin therapy, and in some cases, self-healing. Complete removal is the best outcome when considering the aggressive behavior of this benign lesion that can exert delirious effects on form and function. Management includes diligent follow-up. In a review of 10 condylar ABC case reports, all recurrences were seen within 12 months. According to the textbook, recurrence ranges from 19 to 50% with curatage and 11% after resection. Recurrence is not always immediate, but can occur even 20 plus years after the resection. Referrals indicated if ABC is suspected due to the pathophysiological changes which are occurring within this lesion, such as rapid growth that can begin to impinge on local function. Referrals include radiographic interpretation by a radiologist or an oral radiologist if located in the head and neck region. Also, orthopedic surgery and neurosurgery if location within the bone, such as the spine, is exerting pressure on the neural tissues.